Hi everybody, welcome back. E3 is officially over as of uh, about an hour ago. But we're going to be here all night long. I'm Jeff Gersman. It's easier to point when it's in the middle. <laughs> what are you pointing at? It's... <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks you know like. I don't see no graphic. It's very graphic <laughs> down here. <laughs> Danny O'Dwyer. How you doing? Are you, are you looking all right? at me? I can't see you. All I can see is Shaq's face. There you go. Yeah. You uh, Mary Kish from Twitch is here as well. Hi. As well. Thanks Hi. for having me. Anita Freeman. Also Hi. here of, of Fulbright. Of Fulbright. Of Fulbright. Ah, oh, yes. How's That's everyone me. doing? They're good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still with them. Uh, my partner Jake and I are here, like showing our own game cool. outside of Fulbright. Uh, so that's been fun. And uh, tell us about that. What are you, are you are you talking about it publicly? Or are you showing it to people mm -hmm. doing like secret sneaky meetings? I secret gifts? had some yeah. secret sneaky meetings, but they're always just like in a hotel lobby, so it's like not right. that secret. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's called We Met in May, mm -hmm. and it's a collection of romantic comedy vignette games that are like dates that my boyfriend and I went on when we met. And <laughs> in them, you basically like mess with him. <laughs> Just <laughs> like real life. Like a day. Yeah. Yeah. In one of them, you like bury him in sand and chips and stuff, and mm. that's fun. And then there's another where you're like tweaking his nipples while he's trying to cook. And We've all been there. <laughs> it was fun to show that, that last night. <laughs> date one or date four? Uh, the nipple tweaking was date three in the game. <laughs> <laughs> sort of many more dates in real life. I don't believe you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Third I mean. dates and nipple tweak. Everyone knows that. That's just the rules, Danny. That is the rules. Yeah. Third date, third base. Yeah, yeah. And nipple that's, tweak. uh, yeah. It's called We Met in May, yes. but it's not out until September, right? It's not out until September. Okay. I know, we probably should have, like, released it in May, right? <laughs> <laughs> they called it Gone Till September. Nobody owns that one, right? Right, yeah. yeah. You could definitely use that. Is it, do people get Wyclef Jean jokes anymore? Or have oh, I just everyone is myself? just losing their mind. <laughs> we have the really good gates on the mic, so you can't hear the crowd here Perfect. fucking flipping out the over your Wyclef Jean. Haitian material. giant bomb users right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I know, I know. Thank you. Uh, Mary Kish of Twitch fame. Oh, yeah. The yeah. fame is all mine. You're, I, <laughs> I accept call, all of it. It's, it's like, it's you and then this ninja guy. Yeah, and that's right. Whatever is, else is going on. Dr. Yeah. Disrespect. Self-made yeah. man. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I'm not going to just sit here and grill you about the TOS on Twitch. Well, <laughs> the good news is it works. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, what the fucking <laughs> fuck, right? Okay, all right, no, all right. But just, I don't even want to talk about that fucking, anyway. <laughs> How's it going? Twitch has a stage doing a lot of stuff at the show. We sure do. Jeff. Yeah, I mean, you're like rebroadcasting press conferences, which is like, you know, not that different from your GameSpot days. It's true. Uh, it's actually quite similar. Yeah. Um, the only difference is, is like, uh, Twitch allows co streaming. So people at home, if they have internet, they can like co stream mm. the stream. So that's cool. And that cool. lets them like yell over a press conference. And they do. Who My would God, do that? they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's probably like a correlation between like, how loud you are and like how many viewers you have. Oh, definitely, yeah. No, I can tell you as like as we we don't get that loud, people misinterpret that as like, how come these guys aren't excited? It's like no, it's because eighty percent of Twitch is people going Wah! all the time. Uh, do you think you should do one of these years where you guys just talk as much as humanly possible, as yeah. loud as possible the whole time? I just want like it should be like by the end of the press conference, we're setting this couch on fucking fire yeah. and just being like, take to the streets, these games are so good. Um, it's lit. That's too, yeah. that's too positive. They're so yeah. bad. No, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, that's, we need to rise up. <laughs> yeah, gamers rise yeah. again. Uh, Danny, it sounds like you had some trouble rising up over the course of the show. Well, in some ways, in some yeah, ways, something's I, rising I was, up inside of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm descending down. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get into this butthole talk. Danny, it Thanks. sounds like you had food poisoning for, I, uh, was it a full two days? Yeah, it was great. On Sunday, right after Bethesda. So, I don't know, maybe that's a something. Did Bethesda make you sick? Maybe. Yeah. Wow. Maybe oh, they no. poisoned me. That's, yeah. For stuff, because I, I like, refused hey, nice to, work on the documentary. No. They're like, why would you continue to shill for us, yeah. motherfucker? You built up expectations for Fallout 76, and now we I are know. reaping the whirlwind. What all, have you done? It was all my fault. I made a documentary that was so good that the game couldn't live up to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, we went to a Katsu place that was like a place I frequented multiple times when we because it was around the corner from the the game spot the old we used to hotel go all the time. yeah and uh yeah I mean Jeremy my camera op is here he had fish and he got away with it and I had mm. chicken katsu yeah and, isn't uh, that literally like from the movie airplane where if you get the fish you yeah. don't die but if you did oh really or is it the I opposite forget. it might have been the op I forget it's whatever I forget you order there was which. two options yeah. and if you ordered like the fish 
you're fine. Yeah, I would have thought, like, like katsu is like that much chicken and it's fried. So it's yeah. like, how do you fuck that up? They find yeah. a way. There you go. Yeah. Maybe someone was like, just like, well, some stick this down my pants for a while, let it finish. <laughs> Well, people do that, right? That's gonna get me food poisoning. I have no idea. How I rank don't know how are any of it works? I, I just I don't know. Just think how rank your balls need to be to get food poisoning. It was pretty hot at E3 this year. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I can give you something. So uh, thank you for entertaining me, by the way, because I spent two days watching everyone uh, else streaming E3 uh, from like a, a mile from the convention center. So yeah, it was you weird. were there. Yeah. It was like a throwback. It was like I was you know, back in Ireland in bed sick watching E3. Yeah. yeah. I'm Usually like, drunk, sick. With hey. severe diarrhea, yeah, yeah, just yeah. like Ireland. I know, right? Just yeah. smashing bottles of Buckfast somewhere. <laughs> you need alcohol to digest the potatoes. That's how it works. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought they don't they use the potatoes to make the alcohol in the first place? Circle of life, baby. Wow. Yeah. That's absolutely. I feel like, you know, being, most, being mostly Irish, I should know that. But yeah. I just, I Gerstmann. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Gerstmann. Oh, Gerstmann. Oh, Gerstmann. Yeah. That's what they call it. Uh, what do you think of the show this this year? Uh, you know, like the the Twitch booth, for example. Uh, you know, you, you've got a, a lot of stuff going on, but they're opening it up to the public. Like I've, I've seen a lot of different takes on just like you know number of people and that sort of stuff, especially today. W what do you think? Yeah, they, we didn't even have a booth on the show floor. It's interesting okay, to see how right. it's changing. Yeah. We were in the um, like an offsite, okay. so we could have like more control nice. and yeah. everything's. Typically better when you don't have the restrictions of the show floor. Yeah, you have this like tiny space, and yeah. the workers, you know, want to work within certain hours, and everything's hella expensive. So and E3 starts like five days before E3 opens now, it's right? Mad. So it's mad. Yeah. yeah, we were doing it anyway because um, yeah. we stream on Saturday for EA. That's the one that's dead. Yeah, they were, they were Saturday, yeah. <laughs> I paused there. I'm not yeah. dead yet. I still got some brain left. The letters just fell out of your they mouth. Did. Like wet cakes. <laughs> yeah, you should see me. This whole week, uh, you just kind of like vomit mouth your way through it by saying okay. stuff and people listen to you. But yeah, we were yeah. not even on the show floor and it's interesting to see less people doing that, right? And right. I mean, everybody's talking about it, but it's just crazy to see that transition. But it's still public, so there's still a lot of yeah. public walking around trying to play games. IGN dropped their stage as well. GameSpot's the only right. one that has GameSpot's a stage still there. there. YouTube's not there, they're yeah. LA Live. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's lot, there? A lot of... Uh, I didn't go. I don't even have an E3 pass. Oh, oh really? Okay. All right, I'm yeah. literally here with no You E3 were outside, pass. like, yeah. tweak my boyfriend's <laughs> yeah, nipples yeah, yeah. in this yeah. game. <laughs> actually, like, actually, literally, yes. <laughs> and we showed at the mix, which was, like, what oh, cool. we came out oh, for, cool. which was right. last night, yeah. which was super fun. All the games there were really cool. Um, and, yeah, like, uh, I, we walked by E3 and, you know, looked at all the massive monstrously big posters and I was mm. like oh yeah there's something happening in there to do with games <laughs> and there, then I wandered away there were a lot a lot more energy drink booths this year yeah mm. yeah I had energy drink gummies on my uh, hotel bed this God year damn it I am I am so pissed so <laughs> like envious no, because I got them. So I, <laughs> oh I, I left the Do Not Disturb sign on my door for about three days. Okay. Because just just don't, I, you know, there are plenty of towels in here. I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> just leave me be. <laughs> don't, don't come in and jostle my stuff. It'll be all right. Um, and so I get back to my room whatever night that they, you know, decided to distribute. The gummies. The gamer gummies. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, here we go. <laughs> my Do Not Disturb sign on the door. A, fl a little card stuck in it saying, like, hey, we respected your Do Not Disturb sign. If you need it cleaned, you know, check these boxes, which they'll do after a, a number of days at a hotel. They We're will, worried about they will you. Say, like, hey, are you alive in there? You know, or, or just like, if you need towels, check this box. You or, should or have used all your or, towels or, yeah. by now, yeah, sir. Uh, we know how many towels are in there. That's gross. <laughs> and I was like, there's a drought. I'm just being, I'm just trying to help. Good for you. Um, and so I'm like, oh, they didn't they didn't come in and clean, which is nice because I put up the thing saying don't come in. And then I open it up and there are two bags <laughs> from this nameless company in here with these <laughs> fucking game energy drink flavored gummies. How many gummies? Like two bags of you know, like like two bags about that big. Like they put one on either side of the bed, like maybe two people were staying there. Ten okay. yeah. gummies per bag. Uh, Who shares gummies? Right, no, yeah. not me. That's for sure. <laughs> And two little, like, bootleg five-hour energies. Like, knock off, like, tiny energy things. And then, like, a thing saying, download an app to get more. As if that's, like, a, like, yes, bring me the... No! 
Get that shit out of here. Wait, so what are the side effects of gamer gummies? That's uh, what I'm concerned anger. about, so, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Increased shit posting. And I'm like, wait a minute. I, I, it specifically said you didn't come in my room, but someone did. They didn't just grow there, right? Right. They the just, gummy guy. He gets to bypass uh, all of your do not disturb signs. It, just, it reminded me of the year that that Godfather game was coming out, like, years ago. Did they put a horse's head on your bed? A, yeah. They, what? Yes, they did. They Holy they shit. had a uh, EA went and got like stuffed horse heads made, and then put them under like said like oh we're, we're gonna come in your room and put this under your uh, under the sheets in your bed, and then you're gonna peel it back and be like oh, the Godfather's coming out yay, this uh, is just fuck ridiculous like why would you know it, yeah, it you just coin fuck ridiculous that's yeah that's how angry I am. <laughs> Uh, you know, but usually it was a lot more subtle, and, and usually we didn't have the Do Not Disturb sign up, so, it, right. you know, you go like, oh, well, if they're in here anyway, I guess they're going to leave this garbage. Uh, there was one year, I still have the sticker somewhere, they were sticking cling stickers to the mm -hmm. TVs that were like, for the, it was the year the PlayStation 3 was coming out or being announced or whatever, that was like a thing saying like, to change the game, whatever, whatever the hell it was. Uh, and so it's like this long history of... People breaking into your hotel yeah. rooms to leave marketing shit behind. I'm like, how is that okay? Were you, were you there the year they did the? It was the Master in, Chief in I the think. mirror. In the mirror, yeah. Oh, so you, yeah, you could like, I could be John. Yeah, so you could take like selfies of you in the bathroom mirror of yeah. your own hotel. With, yeah, yeah uh, but nobody wants that. And now no. you're making me on my hotel room peel some shit off the mirror, <laughs> right? So that I so can, can rush the and mirror. Like, get my eyeliner on and get my ass out the door. I don't want to be Master Chief yeah. in that moment. <laughs> That's where I do my biz. Get out. I, I feel like where I want the line to be is like if you want to replace the keys to the hotel room with something that says there's a new Red Faction game coming out or whatever the hell, you know, just like whatever game buys the keys that year. Mm. Fine. Fine. I, I'll carry around keys with a game. I'll keep them because I'm a weirdo and I have a stack of keys. Not even ones that are designed by games. I steal all the keys from all the hotels I go to. Never and know I have to go back. I'm going to reprogram the... I'm going to be a really good hacker someday. I'm gonna reprogram all these keys. <laughs> do something. Probably just reprogram one key. That's a good point. Dude, you're a hoarder and you're not going to do shit with those keys. <laughs> I cut one up and used it to pull some hard drives out of an enclosure once. All right. Do you have a screwdriver at home? A what? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't keep vodka in the house anymore. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it's. I'm angry about. I'm angry about gummies. <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm just thinking how. Uh, I'm surprised no one's done like a horrible escape room in people's. Face. Like you walk into your room and there's, there's just like a guy in there with a fake knife just going like manhunt three motherfucker and like yeah. in stores now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Someone's gonna do it. I mean, it, they're gonna keep going. I'm surprised actually that we <laughs> haven't seen like with with the amount of like kind of meaningless stuff that's on the show floor at E3 uh, that there wasn't like a full on escape room there. It seems like exactly the sort of thing they would have tried to do. We thought there, there was, were there was we, an AR thing. There, there, there were signs for Psycho Circus all around E3. Did you see these? Like, and I was like, holy like shit, kiss? they're rebooting that KISS yeah. FPS? Yeah. And it was for an escape room called Psycho Circus. Uh, on the show floor? No, okay. not at E3. Oh. Oh, also, right. I don't think it was licensed by anyone associated with KISS. That was an album title as well, right? <laughs> Sure. You're a KISS fan. That's <laughs> me. <Kiss fan. laughs> like everyone knows anything about me. Oh man, the audience is going wild. Dan Wright yeah. loves KISS. Wyclef Jean, yeah. KISS. <laughs> All those hot bangers. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy in here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we're hearing Dan Riker does not like KISS. I think he's more of a Kid Rock guy? <laughs> Kid Rock's better than KISS. Kid Rock is better than Kiss. I don't know what that means, though, because they can both be that. quite low. Oh, You're it's, not it's, sure. It's both, like, pretty low. <laughs> but I... I could listen to a Kid Rock song from time to time and, like, have fun with that. Kiss, I feel like uh, there's nothing there's nothing there in that music for me. I'm with you. Yeah. I think that in if we're just on a a one two level of which is better. Yeah. I'll take I'll take Kid Rock. Does yeah. Kid Rock have a video game? Not yet. I mean, I'm a it's either then. that or he gets elected to some office. Yeah, he went into politics, yeah. so I don't see why he can't get into video games. Right. I feel like that's a pretty logical progression at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what sort of stuff happened at the in the, the Twitch area? Are you is it like Hey, you have devs coming by and doing interviews and, and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, we do the traditional, like, 
devs can come by, but I think mm -hmm. the real thing that we're trying to do is like get more partners involved in the show and like yeah. let them interact in some way. So I ran around with a partner, her name's Umi no Kaiju, and she's like a full-time streamer. And we just like ran around on the show floor and made her do like silly stuff, and then we shot it and played it on the live stream. Okay. And then we also let people do interviews. Actually, Danny's channel was just partnered, yeah. so you did one. <laughs> well, there was a no-show, and I, we were there filming our little... <laughs> this is a thing. standard thing with yeah. streamers. Yeah. Weird, huh? <laughs> I just had the, uh, my own one rebranded no clip like last week, so they were like, come on and talk about it. And I was like, literally never streamed anything on this channel. <laughs> and it's partnered. Don't ask any fucking questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, who I might know at Twitch. Right. Um, yeah. so not, no, no, I'm not yeah. implicating you. Other and Nina's people. partnered too, and you can be partnered <laughs> if you want to. Anyway, the point is, is we're trying to help as many as possible. I stopped at affiliate. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I am. Yeah. They won't let me through. Well, uh, <laughs> I know. I started filling Aaron, out. Aaron, do something. I was going <laughs> to. I was going to start filling out the paperwork, and I was like, this is way too restrictive. I don't think I can fill this I, out. I was uh, same. I work so many hours, and they require you to do so many things. And I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think, contractually, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> uh, Danny, it sounds like you've been going around the show floor uh, with, with, well, we're just going around the show generally, both on, on, on the either end of your illness, uh, <laughs> shooting a bunch of stuff either end, for thanks. no clip. Uh, yeah, we're doing, um, people have been asking us to like do something on the media forever. Yeah, and it's about it, time someone rat got, got yeah. down to the bottom of those motherfuckers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know, it seemed like a little bit too like in our wheelhouse, like too like pally or something to do it for, at the start. But like now that we have like a good two and a half years of stuff behind us, um, we were, people have always been asking us to do something on E3 as well. Yeah. So then we kind of thought, uh, oh, let's let's like do a kind of a meta doc on, I guess, how the press does E3. Like mm -hmm. it's about E3, but it's also about like how the press, and then it kind of ended up evolving into how developers plan for as well yeah. um, uh, the show. To kind of like, I don't know, do that whole, you know, stupid pants operation kind of thing of mm -hmm. like, this is what it's like actually being at E3 for people who can't get here. You know, every one of us probably watched like streams growing up and like, you know, wherever you are in the world, you know, I'm sure there's those people on Twitch being like, I'd love to be there, like people watching the stream right now. Yeah. So like, that's the easy one, like everyone kind of does that now. So doing that and then also kind of, I guess, like it, it kind of feels like a, a phone in because it's just people that we know. Sure. <laughs> but like interviewing yeah. uh, uh, folks like uh, we embedded with IGN, uh, we we were with uh, Vice Games for uh, the Microsoft conference. Mm -hmm. We interviewed uh, Jason Schreier earlier today, um, and then we talked to people like we had Marcin Davinsky this morning from CDP, um, uh, like folks like Tim Schafer. We accosted Reb Ford from Warframe, uh, who you had on the catch yeah, a couple yeah. of days ago. Just like uh, talking to them about like what it's like at E3. I guess the way that they tackle it, how they prepare, how their teams prepare, what it's like on the day, and then kind of how it's changed. Because this year definitely does feel different. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. The footfall is crazy. Like I can't, like today especially, yeah. I can't believe how, how empty, empty it the halls felt were. so yeah. empty today. I, and yeah. I couldn't, we were talking about yesterday, I couldn't figure out whether it was like, it was the vacuum by the Sony booth, the vacuum by Sony, mm. the lack of like, Maybe they got better at the lines because the ESA was really bad at, at uh, crowd management yeah. those first couple of years. And Nintendo did have pretty long lines still. Right. Uh, but I think part of it is, you know, so PAX used to only sell, uh, or they used to sell like three day passes or four, four day passes. And so you'd have the situation where if most of the people on the floor had those multi day passes, they would have their fill of it and be like, all right, we're done, yeah. and not come back. So for E3, those public passes were three day passes. Mm -hmm. So here we are, day three. They may have already waited in the, in the Nintendo line. They may have already bought a Fortnite shirt, and right. they might just be done. So there what else just... is there to do in there? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, like kind of. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's so. A guy walked around just to kind of take the temperature or whatever, and mm -hmm. it was like, okay, there's like two people in this Fortnite line. Nintendo mm -hmm. still had really long lines, but but everything that like was really packed on day one and day two, well, really really packed is even relative because it's not like old E three right. rush just like like pinned in walking around like it never got like that, which is kind of nice. Which is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also it, it feels bad. It feels like, hey, if this show is going to be vital and make people happy and 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 serve a business purpose for the people that need that out of it, you probably need to be attracting more people to the show to either take the meetings to see the products or, or show up with the products. Like, and, and it feels like on both ends of that, that's not really happening the same way it used to. Also, like the number of people that I know that left yesterday, like, like business types right. that left yesterday, uh, it was pretty high. 
Mm. People's going like, all right, I'm done. Like, I this, that's all the meetings I need to have. Like, I'm, I'm getting out of here. Like, I don't need to be here anymore. And that, it, it feels bad. I, I like E3. I've yeah. been to all these stupid things. Do you I, predict a, a more decline? Well, look, look at it this way. Like, next year is the year these consoles will launch, right? So that's the year we're going to know for sure. Uh, like, or, or I think we'll know over the next, like, six months. Like, will they have E3? Will it be like this? They announced dates, which that was, the, like, the thing I was honestly looking for. Is like, right. As, a, as I walk out on day three, will there be dates? And sure enough... Oh, yeah, that, that email that comes at 6 p.m. Yeah. On the, on the well, I don't think... I, well, I have to check. I, I wonder if they will send the email saying, like, here's, biggest the, here's the attendance. Yeah. Like, yeah, if it's biggest E3 ever, that's... That can't be true. Yeah, no, um, but also, like, Microsoft is off the show floor, right? So... If you have an E3 badge and you're in the public or business or whatever, you could be over there, and I didn't go over there, so maybe that place was jumping, but, right. but I don't get the impression that it was. Everywhere you weren't was popping, exactly. and that's why it <laughs> looks right. so bland. That's probably it. But it's, <laughs> I, you know, I talked to some people in PR and, and a few people today, uh, you know, even people that, that paid to get in and stuff, and just kind of asked everyone, like, what do you think? And no one was like, I'm stoked. This was perfect. It was like people in PR, especially if like... Smaller products were like, what are we even fucking doing here? This is a huge waste. Um, people that had, had paid for access and, and to get in were like, oh, you know, I saw some cool stuff, but it's no packs. Right. Mm. Uh, there was that story a while back, uh, about a month ago now, that Crescente ran over a variety, like, like talking about the ESA mm. and saying, like, hey, you know, E3's kind of, you know, been on fire. And, then, and there was something in there about, like, maybe they were talking at one point about selling the show to read the company that runs PAX. Mm. Well, it's everything now. They're well, yeah, yeah, they bought, yeah, EGX and, yeah, and all yeah. the Res. EGX Res is that the name of that show? Why do they call it that? I, I'm not the ambassador for the UK and Ireland. <laughs> I figured, ask them. Ask the Queen. She I just knows. assume it's a footy thing. If it's something I don't understand, I just assume it's like related to to soccer. I, maybe Eurogamer Expo just sounded weird with with Gamescom being the Euro. Yeah, I, I think it's just the Res part that I just don't get. Oh, like, yeah. you're like Eurogamer Expo makes makes perfect sense. Yeah. But the rest of it, I'm like, okay, Rez, I got Rez, sure. Rez um, had a big showing one year. Yeah. Wanted to keep the, keep the party going. I guess so. Yeah. Maybe every year there's a Rez booth. And it's <laughs> like, we got trans vibrators for days. Just come on by. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you start to wonder, like, do they take the show and turn it into something more like PAX? Which is probably the right move if they like, want like the is public the LACC to come. the venue for that though it's not it's really not big enough right like even You're if you open right. up Kenshi again it's like yeah. it's just it doesn't have the when you look at something like like Gamescom have you ever been to Gamescom mm-hmm. before yeah like uh, the scale of that is completely different oh yeah it's but even massive. a PAX right mm-hmm. yeah yeah do we need another PAX I don't know do like, we I mean they have yeah like west south and east now that covers so many different areas I wonder like People like the consumers, like how much money they're willing to spend on going to like fan shows. You know? I, well, I wonder if it just becomes like you know, if you're hitting enough different regions, like you yeah. know, only diehards are going to multiple yeah. PAXs. Yeah. So you know, if it's just like, oh, well, there's one in LA, that's the convenient one for me. Yeah, yeah. I don't Where's need to go to Seattle anymore. Tampa, Florida right. convention. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or like Chicago. For all those people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when I see <laughs> and hear about empty E3 show floor. I just think maybe everyone just has a hangover. Yeah, <laughs> That's what yeah, I was thinking certainly, today. It's, it's certainly possible. <laughs> That's something that I've like, I've somehow like lost like total perspective on of the like how drinky is E3. Other than you can make the safe assumption, it's like it, very much so. Mm. Uh, but like being here. Uh, and and like being you know doing doing these shows like I haven't been to an E3 party in like five years or something like that. It's usually tonight that are they doing what upstairs? No, that's that's uh, night two. That's usually uh, oh it Wednesday. is. Yeah. Did they do it this year? Yeah, again? They, they did it last right. night. There we go. Yeah, so my understanding is that the, there was a lot of people at the GameSpot party and they all got very drunk. That's yeah, <laughs> they do. But, yeah. accomplished. but as someone yeah. who worked on the GameSpot crew for many years, I can promise you that they did go party until three in the a.m. and their drunk asses did show up for their shifts the next <laughs> yeah. day because they're always there, that hungover, was, that, so mm, hungover. That but they're was there. like the number one rule when I started at GameSpot back in the day that I was told. By, Don't talk to IGN. Uh, well, okay, <laughs> okay the, the number two rule. <laughs> Uh, was basically like, I don't care what you do at night. Whoa. Uh, uh, like, get out there, you know, yeah, just drink all night, stay up all night, I don't Quick give murder. a shit. But yeah. well, you're in the booth, ready, <laughs> yeah. to, ready to work, first thing. And I always kind of took that to heart. Uh, and, you know, wrote a couple of previews while still drunk from the night before, but whatever. <laughs> uh, and 
actually, I'm, I'm pretty glad to have kind of been pulled completely out of mm. that stuff because I just, I don't know, that, that aspect of the show. Maybe that's just like having been to too many of them at this point. I'm just like, <laughs> I can go to a hotel bar and buy my own drinks. I don't mm. need to go drink someone's free drinks at a show anymore. It's just like, leave me out of the it. Years, the years catch up with you as well. I'm like, I can't, like, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only 33, I guess, but like... Mm. I just I can't do it like I could like even two years ago. It's mm. just it doesn't like now I now we get a place that's like a little bit outside of town and I get a rental car and it's yeah. like it's a, that's uh, I don't well, you got a car you can't I don't touch a drink point. for the week yeah right. yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah that was uh, yeah I mean in the the you know earlier days of covering stuff for Giant Bomb we used to drink a lot more during stuff like this <laughs> right yeah other <laughs> podcasts and stuff and it was just at some point it's just like. There was one year that, like, I think we hit a breaking point, and I was like, I can't do this. And then, like, I basically have, like, one beer per convention at that right. point. And I haven't had it yet, but, you know. But it's a four loco. It's, so, it's, yeah. is there a thing here where we're all getting too old to drink super hard at E3, less people are coming to the show floor, so the show floor is less important, but I feel like people still, like, watch the, like, streams of, like, yeah. the big presentation, so does that mean E3 is just going to, like maybe become more about like having a live stream of just like a small theater kind of thing. Right. Yeah, like, I mean like there's no denying that the press conferences are the top rated things yeah. and yeah. like statistically it never fails and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what we do. It doesn't matter if we do developer interviews. It doesn't matter if I showed a bucket of mayonnaise that said we'll be right back. It doesn't <laughs> fucking matter. Yeah. Can you do that? Though? I Please? actually I have been pulling for it for yeah. years and no one will listen to me. Just put the mayonnaise in a public bathroom and I, yeah. fine. <laughs> 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 I'm getting so much trouble. <laughs> I'm telling you, the press conferences are always the top dog, and then it drops. You yeah. get viewer fatigue, yeah. and yeah. it always was. There was like, honestly, it was always like Sony was the top one. So this year, it was like, I don't care what you do. I don't care how much confetti you throw at the screen. I don't care what ideas you have. It will be lower because... Sony isn't here, and the press conferences yeah. are what bring the bacon home, yeah. as yeah, they say. And I'm not sure if you get that drip of gameplay and stuff you used to get after the fact. You remember mm. you get like, right. well, I was talking to Rich earlier um, about, uh, uh, you know, you'd send your runners out to go out and get the gameplay, right? And yep. whoever was fastest to get it encoded and up on the website. Right. And, but like, even like when we were there, I felt like there was, we had exclusivity with certain people, we'd interview with certain people. And even that game doesn't really seem to be going on now. Like they kind of a lot of the, a lot of the studios they had the press conference bit. They're done. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and you know the, the games on the show floor. Yeah, I think you know EA really kind of refocused. And as the show gets open to the public, they're naturally going to refocus it to games you could buy right now. That mm -hmm. call to action of just totally. like, hey, you played it at the show. Now go buy it immediately and not talk about things that are or not not show gameplay for things that are like a year out. So instead, it's just like. You know, I, I walked around the show floor before it opened, and they say, yeah, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I've already, I already played Doom a month ago. Mm -hmm. I played, you know, like I'd already played most of the games that were going to be at the show, and it was like, it felt a little, I, I, it bummed me out inside. It was because mm -hmm. I, I want E3 to be huge and this big pillar of just like, look at how big video games can be. That's awesome, and also it affords us the opportunity to come here and do this show mm -hmm. because everyone comes to town, and so mm -hmm. we can like book guests because mm -hmm. they're all here already. And I love doing this, so that's the the part that really leaves me a little shook. Is like if E3 yeah. doesn't happen, then if I can't do this, then I you know that that sucks. Like I really like doing it. I feel like the other thing that it is important to me for obvious reasons that would be lost from like not having it be like a gathering mm -hmm. is like as an indie designer who I'm, I'm not like I don't I mean I work at full. Fulbright, but for my personal stuff, I don't like yeah. work with a publisher or anything. I always just self-publish, and it would be hard. Like if it was just those big press conferences, like I wouldn't get that chance to like come, totally. yeah, and yeah. meet up with press who are all in town, and like it would be like I'm like, where would I fit into any of those shows? Like probably not. And I think there's a lot of devs in that in that mm. uh, space. So like being here for stuff like the mix or like meeting up with press in like hotel lobbies and whatever, like. That's actually a really valuable part of E3 that I would hate to see lost. Right, and then it becomes like, okay, well, you can hit some of those people at a PAX, but mm -hmm. not as many, maybe, yeah. or you know, it just it starts to spread out. Mm -hmm. It becomes more costly 
for everyone that's either trying to cover the show or, yeah, or for, for smaller developers that aren't going to break into a press conference or, yeah. or whatever. It's like, yeah, you could just put out a trailer. Yeah. To who, you know? Yeah. This is such a valuable opportunity for mm -hmm. you. And yeah. the Media Indie Exchange is a really good organization that like facilitates that stuff. Mm. Um, Twitch actually typically works with them mm. and they send us like a pool of games and we yeah. bid through them and like try to pick like five or ten indies to be on our show. Mm. And you're talking about like prime time you know, front right. page yeah. of Twitch, they're yeah. going to get more eyes on that show than they could have ever gotten anywhere else. Yeah. It doesn't cost them anything because they were already coming and we're already coming, so just mm -hmm. <laughs> so just show up and do it. And it's, like, awesome for them to be able to have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I that's mean, so true. One of my favorite things to do is, like, even just, like, go to the Devolver area, which is, like, yeah. the alley, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's right. a parking lot, but yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. it's, like, a, you know, it's, yeah, like, murder yeah. alley that you can, like, hang out in, and you always find something really cool there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I found, I played Fall Guys this year, which is basically like Takeshi's Castle. It's like all these like little goo right. dudes. Yeah, There's yeah, like 40 yeah. of them, and oh, you cool. you all oh, run. Yeah. I saw a trailer. Like up that, mountains yeah. and stuff. It's super fun. I would never have like probably uh, been able to play it, and mm. it was like really cool to get mm -hmm. hands on. So it's like those types of things can change my perspective, but mm -hmm. it also gives them opportunities that they deserve. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think you, you've seen some of that already happen. Like that, some of that happened last year because the the big area in Sony's booth where you just have kiosks for third-party games, yeah. big and small. You know, it'd be like, here, we got one kiosk for just about everything that we're, you know, that, that we care about. And it's all, a lot of it's right here, and it's, it's like super small indie games to, you know, Capcom's game, you know, just running. Like, last year, they lifted that whole part of the booth out because they needed open space for people to stand. Yeah. And you're just like walking through there, going like, "Oh, there are way fewer games here." Yeah, like, that's sad. If, if I was making a, a smaller game, and it was like, "Man, I, well, maybe we can get on Sony's booth because they they like to do stuff like that," and then suddenly all those kiosks were gone. I'd be like, mm -hmm. I, oh, "Well, I guess I'm, I'm not even going to come to E3 at that point." I guess. Mm -hmm. Like Microsoft has some stuff for the the ID games they're showing here, but like they seem pretty selective about what mm -hmm. they're putting in in the the Microsoft theater and stuff. So it's not right. quite the same thing. And, and, yeah. Well, I guess there's like an Indicate area, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Indicate is. is the last bastion of hope. Yeah. And it's typically <laughs> it's always around, and it's really good. Um, a lot of times when you're, like, at a Microsoft booth, not always, but, like, a lot of those times, like, they're looking for exclusivity. They're looking for, like, exactly. opportunistic mm -hmm. yeah. opportunity. Indicate is, like, we don't care what you're on. We just yeah. want to... Yeah. See you make great games. Yes. I was hoping it would have gotten bigger this year. It seems like it's a, it's it's still a pretty small little pocket of the the mm -hmm. hall. It was on this in the west hall, kind of tucked away into the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that where they had the little fake grass and some other stuff set up over there? I think so. It was, oh, That's just LA. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Just put the indies over there with the fake <laughs> right. grass. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think the other thing that kind of like was was strange for me is like the number of booths that are just like selling stuff. Like yeah, Funko Pops actually selling. And, yeah, they're not oh, just like it's retail. Not like, yeah, it's not like hey, here's a thing for coming to the show. It's like no, we're running credit cards, buy some yeah. energy drink powder and some Funko Pops and, and gamer gummies <laughs> oh, <God>. on sale. <laughs> Get them, crush them, <laughs> crush the gummies. If it was gamer gummies, that'd be a different story. <laughs> Whoa! All right. The segment, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get banned again. Oh, <laughs> Not another one. Yeah. <laughs> Channels just we dropping left and right that. this week. <laughs> <laughs> Mixer it's, didn't ban anybody. I don't see what they have. The gamer gummies are they bringing don't everyone. Got no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming through. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> you almost made it. You almost made it over the line. Uh, Danny, when are you looking to uh, <laughs> cut all this stuff together? You shoot mirrors. The next I've been, thing. I've been editing the third episode of the Hades documentary for like six months now. So yeah. I don't know. Once I get that one done, um, thank you by the way for coming up with that concept, building the Bastion, and we just ran with it. Pretty really appreciate it. <laughs> um, uh, I, I got that camera back that has all the footage yeah. uh, that they shot around transistor time. It came up in a Q&A. Yeah. Somebody asked where the giant bomb camera was. Greg finally gave me the camera back. I've he got says it. he thinks he might still have the charger for it. So that might be a problem. I bought a replacement charger. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, the how they're networking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah the, the, the E3 thing will be up in uh, first week of July, Raymond. Right, cool. So, yeah, fingers right. crossed. Uh, Mary, twitch.tv. That's right. That's yeah. where it, all the action is. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're just Dance streams and oh, yeah. so on and so forth. I still stream on my affiliate channel. <laughs> I'm the only asshole in this group that's not partnered. 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm literally like, well, my personal Dime channel is super is not part the, of Jab. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that uh, mixer job will push you over the edge. God damn, you know? I've already ruined it. I burned that bridge so hard. Uh, <laughs> that should, that should help. Uh, I'm live on my personal channel, um, Mary Kish, M E R R Y K I S H, uh, every Monday. I typically play indie games most of the time. Cool. And just dance for funds. Awesome. And you have one too. You're a hentai PhD. My yeah. favorite <laughs> name for a channel ever. <laughs> it's me, hentai PhD. Yeah. <laughs> and talking about hentai on the giant bomb yeah. stream. She's a I love doctor. It. All right, we're, uh, <laughs> words work. Let's get into it. Uh, um, Tentacle. <laughs> we met in May, out in September. Mm -hmm. Out in September, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're gonna probably hope to do a similar thing at PAX where we go meet up with press and stuff so hopefully we'll have more footage and stuff to share at that point. Do you have uh, uh, like storefronts you're on? Like is it? Uh, yeah we're on Steam coming soon so cool. you can find it. We met in May on Steam wishlist it please. I've heard that helps mm. people, people sell games. People keep saying that matters I have no <laughs> yeah. idea. I'm like I'm gonna try this out. Let's see what this <laughs> wishlist thing is about. Yeah. Um, so please do that uh, and yeah I stream quite a bit Twitch partner Love it. Uh, come Overwatch. hang out with me. Um, yeah, Overwatch, and I've been streaming some game development actually, which has been pretty fun. I've been working on We Met in May on stream, cool, like every so often, which has been cool. Shout outs to my Twitch chat, who are all probably watching right now because they love you guys. Yay! <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh. <laughs> Hello, oh. hentai PhD yeah. chat. <laughs> Thanks for coming through. Pleasure. We're gonna take Thank another you. break and get back at it with some uh, additional guests here. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>